Hello, my lovelies. It's Friday again. Yay! Hope you've had a fantastic week. Here we go with chapter 10, which is Inside the Dragon's Tummy again. Two minutes later, Saggy Pant and Seepids pushed each other out of the tunnel. I didn't volunteer, said Saggy Pant. I was just shushing a fly off me. Then why didn't you say so, you turnip, said Seepage. Because you said don't speak to no one until we can speak proper with our new teeth or everyone will laugh at us. Well, we can speak proper now, can't we? sputtered Seepage. The brothers continued to argue all the way to the side of the lake until Saggy Pant pointed out a pair of green eyes watching them. They both yelped and jumped behind a rock. The dragon glared at the rock, which seemed to sprout two goblin-shaped ears as Saggy Pant and Seepage peered over the top. It's humming, hissed Seepage. Can you believe it? He gave Saggy Pant a prod. Go on then, he's looking at you, you go. Do what? squawked Saggy Pant, but it isn't my turn. But before he could argue any more, Seepage pushed him from behind the stone. He found himself looking up into the hungry eyes of the yak-eating dragon. So he did the only thing he could do. He fainted. The dragon leaned forward, curious. But Seepage sprang out from behind the rock and charged. You leave my brother alone! Delighted to have another chance to eat a goblin, the dragon got down on all fours, opened her mouth and rolled out her tongue. Seepage had lowered his head and was too busy keeping his eyes as tightly shut as possible to notice where he was going. He ran straight onto the dragon's tongue, into her mouth, down her throat and landed with a splish in a warm and bubbly digesting broth. Within moments, the mingling of stiff goblin hair and dragon tummy juices propelled Seepage back up and out of the dragon's mouth. Another belch of eggy breath lifted him high into the air and for a second time, the dragon fainted. When Seepage landed, he noticed he was clutching a yak's tooth. That's Andy, he thought. Why bother with lots of teeth when you can have one big one? He picked off some of the pink wobbly bits, gave it a quick wipe and popped it in his mouth. He pushed it around with his tongue, trying to find a comfortable spot. And then he licked his lips and had a go at speaking. Thump, he drawled. Perfect, he thought. With a bit of practice, no one will be any the wiser, and at least I can smile again. He made his way back to Saggy Pant, who was sitting on top of the snoring dragon and pounding his fists on her tummy. I want seeps! I ain't coming and get you! he sobbed. He stood up and tried to headbutt his way through the dragon's scaly tummy. Seepage was touched by the gesture. Oi! He dribbled. Saggy Pant, tears running down his cheeks, looked up and saw his brother. With a yelp of delight, he slid off the dragon and they both hugged. When Saggy Pant let go, he noticed something odd about his brother's face. He seemed to be grinning in a very unusual way. Saggy Pant's eyes followed a trail of dragon spittle as it dribbled down his brother's cheek. And then he noticed the yak's tooth. Where'd you get that from? He demanded. Inside the dragon's tummy. It's the yak's tooth, said Seepage proudly. I can see that, said Saggy Pant. Some goblins have all the luck. Oh, I've got a new tooth, isn't that lovely? Next week's chapter 11 is Never Wake a Sleeping Dragon. I find that good advice. So this week, don't bother waking any sleeping dragons. Have a lovely week. See you next Friday. Bye.